Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Amanda Nova. I'm a clinical nutritionist, holistic health practitioner, and applied kinesiologist. And today we're going to talk about vasovagal syncope. So if you took my class on the vagus nerve, these are some things that we already chatted about and that I went through, but I want to provide this information for people who didn't take the class, right? Or I want you guys to be able to have this as something that you can hold on to. So there's a difference between vasovagal and low vagal tone, which is what we hear about most often. We're always talking about stimulate the vagus nerve, tone the vagus nerve, and I know that because I'm one of the people that talks about that all the time. Vasovagal is an overstimulation of the vagus nerve. It's an overactive vagus nerve response that often results in symptoms such as nausea, feeling lightheaded, feeling dizzy, or fainting. So this is triggered usually by um, something like the sight of blood, getting blood drawn. It is often triggered by a drop in blood pressure, a traumatic response, or an acute stressful situation. It could be triggered by having a bowel movement. And I notice it a lot in kids. Most people that have had this have had it their entire lives and it's very scary. It could be embarrassing. It's a very challenging thing to manage. Now, the way that it is managed day to day is by things like there's medications that manage it. There is also things that people can do. Compression socks is one of those things, making sure that somebody gets enough sodium, enough minerals, enough water. Um, also, nervous system regulation. So there's two things that I notice the most with people that have vasovagal syncope. One is a dysregulation of the nervous system. And this is because the vagus nerve is really the switch between our parasympathetic nervous system state and our sympathetic nervous state. Our sympathetic nervous state is our fight or flight. It's our, when we're stimulated, we're releasing adrenaline, we're active. When we're in parasympathetic, we're chill, we're digesting, we're feeling more peaceful. And what our vagus nerve does is take us out of sympathetic and back to parasympathetic, that homostasis, right? It's the switch. So a lot of times people who have vasovagal also have dysregulation within their nervous system. Maybe they've experienced PTSD or trauma in their lives that maybe have caused this. So there's a lot of stuff going on within the nervous system. So nervous system regulation is really, really important. And I share a lot of different ways to do that, you know, and, and will continue to. The other thing is gut health. And the reason is because I often talk about, and I, I covered this in my class, the connection between the brain and the gut is the vagus nerve, right? So the vagus nerve is the communication between the gut and the brain. So if there's dysbiosis within the gut, which would be just eh, toxins within the gut, inflammation within the gut, any issue that you're having within the gut, it, there's a miscommunication between the gut and the brain, right? And so it causes dysfunction within the vagus nerve, which essentially is that connection. And I keep going like this because it is the line of communication. That's another thing. So one of the things that people can do besides nervous system regulation is also make sure that they have a healthy gut and they focus on gut healing. Now, these things don't really help you day to day as much as they help you just prevent, right? So when I say day to day, I mean managing it. You have an episode, right? Episodically, you have vasovagal syncope coming on. What are you supposed to do? Are you supposed to then take a probiotic? Like, is that gonna help you? Probably not. It'll help you in the long run, but it won't help you day to day. So what I'm gonna share today is a couple of techniques that you can do in the moment when you feel an episode coming on. Now. I will say before people either a come to me and say, Oh my God, you are the cure. <laughs> you are like, you know, people are like, Oh my God, she's going to save me. Or I get that didn't work that you don't, you know, that's crazy. I just want to say not everything that I share works for everybody. I'm sharing research and information. Medical journals have been, you know, done on these things and trials have happened. And I take that information and I share them with you in hopes that, you can find some relief or it can help you, but I don't know the severity of your condition and everybody is an individual, right? So this is the best that I can do is share with you what, what I've learned and what I know. So here are the three techniques, right? One is called arm tensing and I'm on the floor and you'll see, you'll see in a minute why. So arm tensing is one. You can do this standing up, sitting down, kneeling down, whatever you want to do, but you're going to clasp your hands like this 
and you're gonna pull uh, and you're gonna tense your arms as tight as you can and pull in opposite directions it is said that you should do this until the symptoms either subside or you can't do it anymore and and i understand that if you're feeling weak or you're feeling dizzy that this one might be a little bit challenging but it's almost just like whatever you can grab onto grab onto yourself and just pull as hard as you can and see if that helps the second thing is crossing your legs and doing the same thing so one leg over the other like so again sitting standing doesn't really matter and you're going to cross your legs and then you're going to squeeze as hard as you can one leg over the other whatever feels most comfortable you can even squeeze and then switch sides if you want but you're going to squeeze like that with your legs crossed like so for as long or as hard as you can again until symptoms subside or until you're like i can't do this anymore like i i can't right and then lastly this one is a little bit easier i think for like this is one i think for kids that is helpful um a little bit harder for the older adults that have things like like parkinson's or some of these older people who have joint issues or health issues to do this one but you're going to crouch down so you're going to squat so this is one so you can teach a kid this this one to kind of squat down if they feel comfortable doing this in in public right so you're going to squat down or take a knee but basically you want to change your elevation so you're going to come down and i always would uh say put your head down as well so you're going to kind of just you're changing from either standing or so you know you want to come down that can often help also sometimes people put their head down as well and they're between their between their legs if they're squatting into into a ball and this can help the symptoms aside again until you feel comfortable enough to to raise up so that's all the information i have today for in the moment techniques for vasovagal please comment up with things that have worked for you like subscribe and if you missed the vagus nerve class you can still purchase the class you can purchase the replay so i'll put that link here as well and looking forward to teaching you guys more about this and just finding different ways to help you. And I'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye.